lots of space where there's only one chair. Let's uh, let's pray and we'll get started. Okay, well, um, well, actually, uh, John, I think if you check in your uh, laptop or phone about the volume, because check check seems to be loud. Um, what is one second? Check two, three. How's it now? Check testing. Is it uh, is it better? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Fine. Okay. Let's uh, let's pray. Right. Let's just just look to the Lord. Okay, everyone, settle down. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's pray. Father, we we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, that we. We have this privilege of again coming to your presence. We have the privilege of um, God calling you, Abba Father, Master. We we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this awesome privilege, Lord. Lord, that whenever we can, Lord, whenever we want to, God, we can always turn to you, Father God. We can always look to you, Lord, Master. We thank you. We thank you. We praise you, Father God, for who you are. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us in the past and all that you've promised, O oh God. Uh, for us in in the present and in the future, Lord, we thank you, Master. We thank you, Lord. Father God, today we pray that, uh, Lord, even as we, Lord, uh, stir up our hearts to lay a hold of that for which you've laid hold of us. Father, we pray that um, you will reveal your heart to us, God. Yes, Lord. Um, we pray that you would continue to speak to us, <clears throat> continue to write your word upon our hearts, Lord. And um, I pray that there'll be a rich deposit of your word. Lord, and uh, Holy Spirit, we ask, we invite you to come and, Lord, reveal yourself, reveal your word to us, each one of us here. Thank you. Just go ahead and just pray. Just ask the Lord. Just stir yourself up <clears throat> like we might, um, uh, we might our, our minds can be in different places. Just want to invite us to just pray to the Lord and say, God, um, let me be of one mind, one heart. Um, and also, you know, some of us, uh, those of us who can pray in the spirit, who can, you can just pray, begin to pray softly, just between you and the Lord. Just begin to pray in tongues, right? So that you can stir yourself up in the spirit, man, and uh, just get ready to receive from the Lord, right? Just begin to just pray in tongues. Begin to pray uh, just between you and the Lord, loud enough so you can hear. <coughs> <coughs> Just stir yourself up, spray in tongues, spray in the spirit. Just open your mouths, spray, go ahead. <clears throat> the Bible declares that when we pray in the spirit, you know, our spirit man is being edified. There is strength coming in, strength we did not know existed coming into our hearts. There is a freshness that is coming in. In Romans chapter 5, we just read about the fact that we, sometimes we don't know what we should pray for as we ought to pray. But the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us which, with groanings. Uh, he makes that perfect intercession. You know, he prays on our behalf. And so, yeah, just pray with confidence. Just pray uh, with sincerity. Just pray with, um, with, with focus. We're just praying the mind and heart of God for our lives. Uh, even as we pray in the spirit, we are praying the, praying the mysteries of God. Just go ahead, just pray strong. Um, pray, pray. Don't be distracted, but just continue to pray. 
Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we just pray for revelation, knowledge, understanding, mysteries, Father God, to be deposited in our hearts, Father God. We, we thank you, Lord, that Lord, that um, this is Lord, every prayer, Lord, uh, in, in, while praying in the Spirit is being answered because it's the perfect prayer. Father, we thank you for the freshness that's coming in, Father God, Lord, over our hearts and minds. We thank you, Father God, for the things that are deposited. Lord, we thank you for the line upon line and precept upon precept, oh God, uh, building up, okay, that, uh, the, yes, Lord, that happens in the spirit of Father God, even as we pray. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Yes, Lord, we continue to press in, press on, Father God, um, forgetting those things which are behind us, God. Lord, you've exhorted us to press on and move forward and, and go ahead, oh God. Uh, move forward into all the things that you have prepared for us, Father God. Yes, Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for this privilege. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. And thank you for your continued presence in our lives, Father God. We bless your name. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 So uh, the Bible talks about the fact that, uh, you know, that he has laid hold of us. Okay. Which means he has... He has captured us. He has laid hold of us. Okay, and um, and the, the fact is that um, we are also supposed to lay hold, which means grab hold of of some things. Right? The Bible says that the things that we are supposed to lay hold of is for the very reason that He has laid hold of us. Okay, the things that we are supposed to you know have a strong grip on is because He has actually laid hold of us. Okay. So since he has already laid hold of us, saying, okay, he has captured us and he's held, he's holding us, you know, we need to have a tighter grip on the things for which, the reason for which he is uh, laid hold of us. So the reasons could be like, uh, you know, many things, right? His plans, purposes, thoughts, uh, the the ministries, or whatever he has in future, you know, uh, different things. So we need to have a, a firm grip on that Okay. Because he has a firm grip on our lives, so why should we, you know, let go, or why should we hold on to things in a very easy, you know, happy-go-lucky manner? Right? You can have a focused and a very strong grip on those things. Right? So, um, yeah. So, I just wanted to remind us today, uh, even as we start. Right? Okay. So, um, so last class we we ended with. Uh, you know, where should we praise? How should we praise? When should we praise? We looked at some of those scriptures, like right? the dynamics of praise. And today we're looking at uh, chapter four. And um, yeah, let me just also put it up. So chapter four, right? The power of praise. Okay, the power of praise. Okay. So we know praise is not just saying praise the Lord. Okay. Um, yeah, any doubts? Um, brother, any doubts? Um, this red shirt, any doubts? Anything? Clarifications? Anything? No? Okay. You can ask me, right? Okay. Um, so the power of praise, let me just put it up for the online students. Okay. 
Okay, so um, chapter four, right? Power of praise. So we know that praise is not just saying praise the Lord. Okay, we know that. I think we've come past that. Praise is not, um, we know it's not just a song saying, which has the words praise the Lord or hallelujah, right? Praise is much more than that. We looked at all the aspects of uh, of, of praise, right? It is applauding the Lord. It's recognition of who God is and giving thanks to Him. It is, um, uh, you know, uh, it is approving. It is, uh, uh, it is giving praise, meaning that you are actually acknowledging that He is who He says He is, and in coming in agreement, right, with all that He has said right, and all that He is. Right? So, since we know that is what praise is and since all of us are called or it is our response to him right we also need to understand that there is when we praise the lord it is powerful okay powerful in what aspect okay powerful in what aspect in what way is it powerful we looked at that verse which talks about that he reigns or he he's enthroned the lord is enthroned in the praises of his people. Okay, so we also looked at what it means, right? What is what does it mean for God to be enthroned on the praises of his people? You know, is he not already enthroned in the heavens? Right? Is he all is he not already the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the one who's the sovereign creator, right? Is he not already on the throne? Right? Yes, he is. But when we say that, you know, on the praises of his people, the Lord is enthroned, which means that when we come in agreement and declare the truth of God, we experience the reign of God over circumstances, over situations, and in our own lives, right? The truth of God, the truth that he is the liberator, the truth of God that he is the deliverer, right? The truth of God that, you know, Satan trembles and flees in the name of Jesus, so all that we experience when we actually praise him. So that is what it means when we say, when we say that, okay, he's enthroned on the praises of his people, meaning that we experience the rule and reign of the one who is enthroned. Right? Even as we praise, even as we declare you know, who he is, what he, what he can do, we experience that shift in our own lives. Right? We experience that shift in the very atmosphere we are in, it could be an atmosphere of, you know, hopelessness. It could be an atmosphere of, you know, discouragement. But there's a shift, right? Why? There is a shift meaning there is a change, right? Why does it happen? Because we are actually declaring, proclaiming truth, right? And he reigns. His power, which is in that truth, is released and we experience it, you know. That we come in agreement, so we experience it, right? Okay, so let's look at some of these examples where people actually experienced the power of praising God, right? So some of these examples that we see are, it seems like very foolish. Right? In this circumstance, how can people actually praise the Lord? Right? In these kind of situations, how or why should people praise the Lord? But people did, right? They did the foolish thing. They did what seemed to be, um, you know, illogical, irrational, and experienced the power of that truth, what they were proclaiming. Okay. So one of the examples that we can we see is in Second Chronicles chapter twenty. Okay. Second Chronicles chapter twenty. Now this is the story of um, Jehoshaphat. Um, King Jehoshaphat. So they uh, let's um, okay. I, I, let me just paraphrase it, right? So the the people of Moab uh, came to battle, which means the Ammonites, the Moabites. Um, uh, they came to battle against Jehoshaphat, and so some people come and tell Jehoshaphat, okay, a great multitude coming against you from Syria and and, and from this place. So he seeks the Lord, right? Who's seeking the Lord? Jehoshaphat. He's seeking the Lord, Second Chronicles chapter 20, right? And they go and um, uh, they, they pray, they seek the Lord. He, Jehoshaphat also hears... 
Okay, Shubham, can you please yeah. uh, mute your mic, please? Thank you. Okay, so um, so this is what it reads. Let me just read. Okay, um, Jeha, uh, Second Chronicles twenty and verse fourteen. It says, then um, well, verse thirteen. Now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives, and their children, stood before the Lord. That is verse 13. Verse 14, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, etc. Verse 15, And he said, Listen, all of you, all you of Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you king Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid, nor dismayed, because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but the Lord. And then uh, in verse 17, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the uh, salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. I, I want you to follow in your Bibles, please. Do you have your Bibles open, brother? Keep your Bibles open. Second Chronicles 20. Okay. Take your Bible. Yeah. Second Chronicles 20. Yeah. Open up. Okay. All right. Okay. Second Chronicles 20, and we are in verse um, 18, right? So 18, and Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshipping the Lord. Okay, so this is what happened. Then, verse 20, um, so they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Okay, so here we see something which is very totally irrational. Jehoshaphat does. So they are they see, they see these Ammonites and Moabites coming against um, you know uh, them uh, and armies coming against them to fight against them. So he does something. He establishes something and he says that he he it says first he consulted with the people and then he appointed. Okay? What did he appoint? Singers, worshippers, okay? musicians. So he says that appointed those who would praise the beauty of his holiness and they went before the army. Okay. Not after the army, but before the army. And we're saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Verse 22. Okay. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Right. So this is what we see, that there was a victory, and it's a supernatural victory. Right? It is not something that they, they did not fight, they did not go against them, but it was uh, something that was... Um, okay. Yeah, so it was a supernatural victory, which was granted by the Lord. And we see the power of coming in agreement, doing something foolish that the Lord had you know, because they seek the Lord, and this is something that the Lord said through the prophetic word that they just need to see. They will be spectators. They will see the victory of the Lord. They will see the breakthrough that the Lord grants His people. Right? So, so they did that. Okay. So, something that we can understand. Right? Certain things that He did. He seeked the Lord. He consulted with the people. Right. He himself personally prayed, seek the Lord. And obviously, he got this word about praising him in the right in the midst of his enemies, facing his enemies. Right? So that's what he did. 
he put people there. So this is not just one incident. We have one more, right? Um, let's look at Acts chapter 16. In the New Testament, we see Acts chapter 16. Um, this is about Paul and um, Silas, right? Okay, Acts chapter 16. Okay. So um, if, you, if you look at uh, the verses from 16 onwards, it talks about how Paul and Silas were put in prison, right? So in verse 25, we read something which is... Uh, which is which actually challenges us, challenges our faith. Verse 25 says, But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Okay. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Now, were they in church? Where were they? They were in prison. Yeah. What was their physical condition? It was, it was bad. They were actually suffering. Because before that, before they were put in prison, they were actually beaten. They were whipped, right? So it says that many stripes were laid, so which means they were bit. I mean, sorry, um, they were beaten and they were also whipped, right? So, and their feet was actually locked in. It was put in, you know, stocks, which means uh, those days stocks were two wooden planks, right? And then it'll it'll have an opening for the feet. So you just open it up, you put it, and then the legs are there, and they lock it and some mechanism is there to lock which means that you cannot move and right? you cannot escape and it was used for criminals it was used for people who would escape from prison so it was a very uncomfortable position right even even when we sleep at night we change positions right so many times in the night we turn this side that side and you know all that but here it's a difficult thing their backs are already paining and their feet are in stocks and they are in prison and and Verse 25 is an amazing verse. Right? It says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praising, sorry, praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. So this went obviously went on for some time. Right? They were singing to God. And it says, verse 26, suddenly there was a great earthquake, and the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed a doors being opened um, everyone's chains being loosed etc right it seems like again a supernatural breakthrough that's happening you know too much of a coincidence that they were just singing and praising god and thanking him and praying and all that and there is this it seems to have been in the natural realm a breakthrough right something that liberated them something that uh, just broke open the prison doors and chains were loosed and all that. Right? So we see that right, happening. Okay. So it's not just one isolated incident, but we see that um, you know this kind of a breakthrough and it coincides with them singing uh, hymns to God, right? literally praising God for who he was and what he could do, etc. Right? Okay, so we see something similar and this is when God instructed gave specific instructions, and it was a shout of praise. We see that in Joshua chapter 6. Right? Let's look at Joshua chapter 6. We see that they were given instructions uh, to go around the wall of Jericho, and they were instructed to do some specific things. Right? Okay, let's read, let's read that. Okay. Um, chapter 6. It says, uh, verse 1, Joshua chapter 6, right? Okay. Now, Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. So it was a siege. The army, children of Israel, they were around, surrounding, and so it was closed. Now the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. Okay? So this is something that he says. Verse 3, you shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests 
shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, right? And the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Right? Very strange instruction. Right? You go around the city, and before that itself, the Lord says, okay, I've given you this victory. So you have this problem, you have this challenge. The Lord says, I've already given it to you. I've already given you the answer, I've already given you the deliverance, or I've given you the victory. Okay? But the Lord says, this is what you will do in order to possess that victory. This is what you will do. You will go around it six times, six days. On the seventh day, you will go around it seven times. And um, the priest will blow the trumpet. And you will shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city will fall down. So just imagine Joshua's plight. Right? He's a young leader. He's there. He's uh, before him, you know, this... A great leader, Moses, uh, uh, larger than life leader. You know, he has followed his footsteps and he's served him. And here's Joshua, and he's leading these people and this strange instruction. So, you know, maybe he called a lead, uh, leaders meeting and he's saying, This is what God tells me that we should, you know, we should do this. Uh, and uh, you can just imagine, like the armies or the commanders. Is looking at each other and saying, you know, what is this? Right? We've never, you know, done this before, and this goes against all logic. Why should we do this? It seems foolish, right? But just one second. Um, just one second. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, so. The, um, this is what he says. Take up the Ark of the Covenant, he tells the priests, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets before the Ark of the Lord. Then he said to the people, proceed and march around the city, and let, them, let him who is armed advance before the Ark of the Lord. So it was, when Joshua had spoken to the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets. And the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. Verse 9. Okay, you're not reading, you're not following through. No, no, follow in your Bible, right there in front of you. You're looking elsewhere, right? Okay, um, do you need anything? Drink water, you're okay? Fine, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. So, um, where were we? Verse 9, okay. The armed men went before the priests who blew the uh, trumpets, and the rear guard came after the ark while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. Right. So now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, Shout, and then you shall shout. Okay. So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city, going around it once, then they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. So you can picture the city is there, the walls are there around the city. And they say that, you know, the walls were so thick, you know, it's like two chariots could actually go. You know? If you've seen pictures of the wall of China, Great Wall of China, you know, actually people can walk around it on the wall, right? So uh, they say that the wall of Jericho was like that, right? So so that's, that's the kind of wall we are talking about. It's not like a small puny thing, right? So, so Joshua gives this instruction that he will shout and they will do it. Okay, let's go down to verse 15. But it came to pass on the 17th day, sorry, seventh day, that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day, only when they marched, uh, on the day only, they marched around the city seven times, just like how, how the Lord instructed. And the seventh time it happened, when the priests blew the trumpets, that Joshua said to the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction 
it and all who are in it, only Rahab the harlot shall live, and so on. Okay. Um, verse 20. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets, and it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, and so on. Right. So Jericho was um, destroyed. So we see that happening. So again, something supernatural, right? It has not been heard of. How can just a shout bring down a physical structure like that, a wall, right? But it was specific instructions which was given by the Lord. And the principle is that right, when it comes to a shout of praise, it was unto the Lord, obviously. It was acknowledging God's instruction and it was in obedience to God's instruction that they did so. Right? So today we have a, a, an example and a lesson that we can follow. You know, Maybe it's not a physical wall before us. right? It could be a, a, something that the walls of Jericho represent. Some kind of a challenge, something that the Lord has already given to us. Right? He has already promised us, he has already given us the victory, but we have not seen it. Right? So, when we seek the Lord, and when the Lord says, you know, you need to praise, you need to come in agreement with what I have said, and you need to lift up your voice and, and shout out a shout of praise, we can expect the same thing. And the thing is this, it goes beyond our logic, it goes beyond our reasoning. Every time there's a supernatural right, work of God, it goes beyond our logic. It goes beyond our reasoning. Right? So even so here, right? so there was, how can we just shout? How can we just praise? You know, when we looked at Acts 16 and Philipp, uh, uh, in, the, in the prison at Philippi, Paul and Silas, I'm sure you know, things would have been going on in their, in their minds. You know, well, seems like the Lord has abandoned us. You know, how can we have we are actually doing ministry? We were doing the right thing. We, we we are actually here in prison because we actually delivered that slave girl who was possessed with an evil spirit, like the spirit of divination, and we are here in prison. So, what do we do? Right? They turned their focus onto God, and they began to praise and they began to sing. Right? Here we see a specific example of shouting. Like shouting a shout out of praise. So it's not because you're in a great mood that morning, right? Or you know, in that particular church service, you know, you're you're fully pumped and you're just very happy, and and because of that, you're shouting out, right? It's not just that. Right? It is spiritual warfare. It's spiritual warfare where the weapons are spiritual weapons. And it seems like these weapons are actually weak because it seems like mere words or it seems like mere songs. It seems like a mere shout. right? But we understand that it is towards the Lord. It is as unto the Lord. It is as directed by the Lord. So we see a principle here as well. right? So that is why this shout of praise or lifting up, or or just praise itself in general, is so powerful, right? It goes against the works of the enemy, and it's a supernatural work that happens when we praise the Lord. The supernatural work of God. The powers of darkness are stirred up. The powers of darkness are defeated, and uh, and the Lord has put this principle here for us, right? Okay. Uh, another example that we see in Judges 7 is about Gideon. So they do the same thing. You, know, you can read through it. Um, Gideon's, um, uh, it, that, that whole incident, when he leads the army, then they take those, uh, you know, in these earthen vessels, they take the uh, uh, fire, um, they, they take those torches of fire and, and the trumpets and, and so on. And the, the same thing happens, right? We see something supernatural happening there also. Okay, so you can keep go through that and read through that uh, instance, and that is in uh, uh, Judges chapter seven, verse two, uh, verse twenty, and so on. Okay, any questions? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 
uh, trying to correlate to what we did. Yeah, was it was it Shabak? Was it a shout of praise? Um, yeah, most likely, most like no, it, it doesn't seem to be uh, halal because um, yeah, it's it's not a celebratory shout. It's not a, like halal would have a rejoicing. Halal would have. Um, you know, a celebration because the very word means that you can be foolishly loud. So it was not like that, right? So, so it's more in lines with Shabak. Yeah. Okay, uh, Shani, you have a question. Yeah, go ahead. No, I just couldn't hear the question that somebody asked in class. What was the question? I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just one second. Uh, just, can you just increase this volume? Um, if you can increase your volume over there also, um, yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. I was just saying that I couldn't hear the question that was asked in class. What was the question? Oh, the, okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, the question was, was it, um, is it more to do with Shabak? Like we were, uh, we were looking at those Hebrew words of praise. So is it Shabak or is it Halal? Because both have this expression of loud expression of praise, so that was the question. Yeah, so it seems more like shabak rather than halal because halal is um, more to do with celebration and rejoicing and being foolishly loud in praising the Lord. Yeah, so that's what I was explaining. Okay, hope that helps. Right. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So, so when it comes to you know when it comes to spiritual warfare, okay, you know there there are times when we just intercede. There are times when we pray. When we just ask the Lord and we say, God, you know, what should we do in this situation? And you know, there's times when we just pray through, etc. But uh, there are also times when uh, when the Lord directs us to shout. When the Lord directs us to shout, uh, um, you know, it could be a declaration. You know, we, and you know, you're studying in faith uh, about the confession of faith. If you look at some of the songs that we sing, these are confessions of faith. Right? You're just declaring uh, who God is in that particular situation. You're declaring who God is. You know, in, in maybe in a as we are going through a crisis, we are declaring who God is in that challenging situation. Like, right? which seems to be the opposite of what you're declaring, right? Sometimes it's like that. You know, I'm singing a song, and you know, there is so much of confusion and pain and lack and and I'm here. I'm declaring, you know, that he's the provider. I'm declaring that he's the, you know, he's the deliverer and he's the healer and so on, which is opposite of the situation. And that's how the declaration of praise is, right? It's an opposite of the situation. It's not because yes, it's great when things are going fine, and then we are also, you know, acknowledging God. What is happening is because of you. you know, what is happening around or here? It's because of you. That's that's absolutely, you know, scriptural. But also, when it comes to you know this kind of warfare and this declaration of praise and and shout of praise, we see the situation is opposite of what we are actually singing out or declaring. Right? So even in those moments that we choose to praise, right? like the psalmist says, "I will bless the Lord." Right? Does he say that? "I will." So that's a choice. Right? It's not because a choice that is made because. You know, you're in the right mood. I'm in a good mood. You know, I feel like praising the Lord, right? Um, which verse is that? Psalm 34, I think, right? Um, just turn to Psalm 34. Um, yeah, Psalm 34 and verse 1, right? It says, I will bless the Lord. Okay, so I will, which means that it is a choice. It's a decision. That he's making. I will bless the Lord at all times, okay? and His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. Okay, so so there's a choice that is involved. Right? I will a decision, right? and. Um, when it comes to a decision, many times we you know we we make decisions because it's nice, you know, it's it's convenient or it's uh, it's a uh, we feel like doing something. But then there are times when we need to make a decision, especially in moments like this, when it's not convenient, 
right? When it goes, when it seems foolish, but you make a choice and you make a decision. Okay. So what are some, some aspects? What are some ingredients that are involved in this whole thing of a shout of praise or, you know, the spiritual warfare of praise, right? You know, when we use praise, what is it? First of all is this element of faith. Okay. So how does faith come? Right? Romans chapter 10, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So God has spoken, faith arises. Right? And faith is something that is spiritual. It's not some, you know, it's not you psyching yourself up, right? Saying, okay, yes, yes, yes. I will, I will, I will. No pain, no gain, you know, you know all that. It's just like, you know, it's not psyching yourself up. It's something that is spiritual. Faith is also a gift of the spirit. Right? It's a, it's a, uh, it's a, if you look at 1 Corinthians 12, faith is something that is listed as one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, um, so we see that, okay, there is this whole aspect of faith. So it's not just, um, not because you feel like it, not because everybody is doing it, but you personally, you know, you receive faith that comes from the word of God. Okay. Second thing, a word from God, a specific instruction from God himself, right? In Second Chronicles, we see that. Gideon's case, we again see that, right? So a specific word from God, right? There is a stirring in your heart. It need not be a big encounter, you know. It can be just a, a prompting in your heart. Just go ahead, just sing and declare it. Just go ahead. And the Holy Spirit tells you, or gives you a song, man, the song that you already know, which is against that situation, you sing it out. Or a scripture that he puts in your heart, which is against that particular situation. You speak it out, you sing it out, and you praise God with it. And um, we also see that there is a preparation. A preparation meaning that you prepare your heart. You know, in in um, Jehoshaphat's case, they prepared. They kind of organized themselves and said, yes, this is what we are going to do. So there is a preparation. Okay, um, let's turn to uh, Proverbs 24. Okay, Proverbs 24 and verse 10. Okay, it says, If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Okay, so there is a preparation, there is a growing, and there is a strengthening that is required. Okay, so... It's very clear. It says, if you if you faint, your your strength is small. If you're going to faint in the day of adversity, but praise God, you know God prepares us, and even as we cooperate with Him, you know our strength will be renewed, right? So, <clears throat> so this is something that we can do. We 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 in faith we receive a word from God, and in in faith, we prepare ourselves. You know, the Proverbs, the Bible also talks about that the preparation of the heart belongs to man. The preparation of the heart, you know, you, we prepare ourselves. We pray in the Spirit. We, we, you know, we uh, read the Word of God. We meditate on the Word of God. We declare the Word of God. The preparation of the heart belongs to man. It belongs to us. Right? Uh, it says the answer of the tongue comes from the Lord. So, which means the answer, the breakthrough, uh, that comes from the Lord, you know, his supernatural work, it comes from him, right? But the preparation, it it belongs to us. Right? That responsibility, it is ours, right? So, um, you know, I, I remember some of those uh, uh, moments when, you know, literally did something foolish after learning about declaring the praise of God or confessing the word of God. Right, because I used to work for this company. I was in sales and I was uh, selling these high-end toys, right? And, uh, and at that time, what happened was, uh, you know, uh, we actually this man placed an order. This uh, retailer, was, we placed an order, <clears throat> and the supply went too much. Right, it was much more than what he had ordered. So, which means that he wanted to return. Right, let's say he ordered five things. The there were fifteen things which went. Of the same, the 15 numbers of the same thing. So he said, you know, I, I don't want to, uh, I can't pay for it and I can't, I don't want to keep it and my, it's a, it doesn't sell that fast. So you take it back. And I was stuck because I was a new, you know, new um, employee 
and uh, and i couldn't uh, you know i couldn't take it back and then if, if i'm not able to take it back a lot of things they will cut from my salary and all those things right because this guy is not paying so so i just uh, i pleaded with him i said you know you keep it for a week you keep it for a week and if it doesn't move if it doesn't sell then you let me know you but you, i want you to keep it for a week please can you do that he said okay fine so then i didn't know what to do you know god you know this has to sell it has to sell within this week so i said god i just prayed and then this was the days when i was just learning about you know declaration of faith and confession of faith and and so i did something foolish i went and i went up and i and he had actually placed these you know these items on the shelf right uh, this high value toys so i just laid put my hands on those on that shelf and uh, saying be sold in jesus name and it seemed it seemed foolish i felt foolish but i said god you know this is you or nothing right um, so i'm just learning about all these things and i said be sold in jesus name and i thought i just looked around nobody's watching then i looked up i saw there was a cctv camera i said oh god you know he's seen it i think what he's wondering what i did anyway so i did that and every day you know i just declare let it be sold in jesus name and sure enough you know that next week i get a call from him and i said yeah hey, i don't know what happened uh, but i need more of that stuff right because it's it's all sold out i need more of it right and i could i know in the natural it was only god right? i don't know the dynamics of how it happened and uh, i didn't get into it but we know that and it was just faith in god and declaration of what god who god is right the god of breakthrough the god who delivers the god who liberates right so so my faith level went up when i saw that uh, when i experienced that right so at the time when i was declaring it what was the situation the product was still unsold what was i declaring be sold in jesus name it was the opposite of the situation right so whenever we look at the songs of declaration or songs of praise and that we are declaring over situations over our own lives could be the opposite most times it is the opposite of what we are experiencing it is the opposite of what we are going through but when we declare in faith right putting our faith in god right it's not assumption faith is not assumption faith is being sure of who god is what he said he will do right so being rooted in the word of god right taking god's word and so faith is also something deeply spiritual something that happens in your spirit right so so i just wanted to share that so um so we can praise god we can declare his praise and expect to see the breakthrough and we can you know sing and pray with expectation there is a shift there is a change that is happening in the very atmosphere right where there is hope and hopelessness and you declare and uh, another testimony is um, you know we were singing the song um in jesus name right you know that song in jesus name god is fighting for us and you know and that in as part of that there is one the lyrics actually are from the song it says i will i will live i will not die right and declare the works of god so um there was one so one particular sunday we were singing it we were singing it over and over again and especially this part i will live i will not die and declare you know and so so we were singing it and then the next week we get a testimony you know uh, uh, an email so this person says that uh, she actually wanted to um, kill herself like she was in debt there were a lot of things that were not going right her marriage was broken she was in debt and she was a believer and she said i can't take this pain anymore no i can't go through this anymore and and so she said okay before i take my whole whole life take my life let me just go for this service attend this for the last time and then let me you know just do what needs to be done so but when she came and when she she was there for the service and we sang that song and you know all of us together were praising god and that was a declaration i will live i will not die and i will declare the works of god right so she and we and for sometimes we we just sang that over and over again right and then she says that see my situation has not changed physically right but there's a deep change in me in my heart in my spirit 
something has broken, something has shifted in me. So even though the problem seems to be the same outside, but something has changed in me. I've got the will and the reason to live. So I'm going to live and I'm going to do and I'm going to follow God and I'm, I'm going to see a breakthrough. And that was a testimony. Praise God, right? So sometimes, you know, yeah, there is a sh when we when we, all these examples that we saw you know, physical breakthrough, and some of these breakthroughs are inside of us, which is as important as things that are in the natural, right, on the outside. Okay, okay, we'll take a break, ten minutes, and then we'll come back. God bless. <laughs>